Hello, welcome to codesnippet.java. So in this video, we are going to cover the JVM architecture and we will see how JVM works under the hood. We all know how to execute Java program, but we should also know how it is being executed and how JVM is executing that program. So there are many components inside a JVM architecture and we are going to cover each and every one of them and I will make it easy for you in order to understand it. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. So this is a potential architecture of JVM that we have. So there are many components and we will cover each and every one of it. So let's go through it. First component is class loader at the top of it. Then we have some area, this area, this particular area in the middle. We call it as JVM memory. There are multiple parts of it. We will cover that as well. And at the end we have execution engine and we also have some interfaces and libraries that we will see at the end. Now let's get started with class loaders. So whenever we write a Java code inside a Java file, and we compile it by using java c command right we do java c hello.java right like that and once we hit that command a class file will be generated and who will generate that class file a compiler will do that for us right so java compiler will compile dot java files and create a dot class file and that particular dot class file will be your input to jvm jvm will pick up dot class file and start executing it now let's get started with class loaders so we will first see what actually class loader is doing after that we will see the type of class loaders so class loader is basically responsible for three activities loading linking and initialization that sounds too generic so let's see what exactly it is so loading loading is basically as the name suggests it will read dot class file and it will generate the binary data out of it so string of zeros and ones it will generate after that, some basic information will be stored at your method area. What is method area? If you see the architecture in the JVM memory, we have method area there. So here some basic information will be saved. What exactly will be saved that we will see. So first it will save the fully qualified name of your class and its immediate parent class. If there is any inheritance or something like that, if the class is uh, related to any interface or enum then that information also will be stored and some other information like variables modifiers methods other information will be stored at that method area at this stage so next one is linking linking will perform three tasks verification preparation and resolution right so let's see what it is verification is that ensuring the correctness of dot class file so once when we pick up the class file it will verify if the format and everything is correct and if in case there is some issue with verification then it will throw some error which is a verify error which comes from java.language package next one is preparation let's say there are some static members or variables or default values inside your classes then the memory for those variables will be allocated in preparation step so basic thing this guy is doing is allocating memory to static members or default values remember it like that next one resolution so it transforms symbolic references into direct references right so it may sound complicated but if there are any symbolic references or pointers inside your code, it will try to replace it with the actual values or a direct values of it. And it will pick those values from method area because we have saved it there only right in the previous steps. So going back here, we have covered three parts of linking step, verification, preparation and resolution, right? So let's move to initialization, which is a third activity, which is performed by class loaders, right? There were three loading, linking and initialization. This is the last one of it. As the name suggests, it will initialize the static variables and it will assign the actual value. What we did in last step here in preparation, we allocated memory to static members. However, in initialization step, we are actually initializing it. So it will start from top to bottom and it will start initializing all the static members or default values uh, from top to bottom in the class, right? So that is a simple job of initialization step. So that's about class loader activities, right? Now, there are three types of class loaders. Now many people ask this question in an interview. Okay, what type of class loaders we have? Which class loaders we have? What is the task of class loader? Why we have so many? So let's see what it is. So first of all, we have three class loaders, bootstrap class loader, extension class loader, and system application class loader, right? We will go through it one by one what exactly it is. So these class loaders are segregated based on from where they are going to pick up the class files, okay? So class loader's basic job is to pick up the class files from certain path. So bootstrap class loader will pick up the class files from bootstrap path. Okay, so this particular path, if you see here, Java home, JRE, LIB, this is also called as bootstrap path. The next guy is extension class loader. So this is a child class of bootstrap. 
so basically it will check for some other path so it is jre lib slash ext which is kind of a configurable path and it will try to go and pick it up from there the next one is system or application class loader so this is a child of extension class loader so on top we have bootstrap then we have extension then we have system application class loader right and it loads classes from application class path okay there is kind of an environment variable where we declare the class path of that application and it will and this class loader will go at that path and try to fetch the class files from there right so this is a environment variable where we declare this application class path now let's move ahead so this is a delegation hierarchy so hierarchy of class loaders so whatever we have seen so it basically says first bootstrap class loader will try to fetch the class if it is not found then it will move to extension move extension class loader will try to find it at its extension path if not found then application class loader will try to find it and it will get it so if you see the class loader part we have covered now we are moving to jvm memory now there are five different type of jvm memory we have now let's see what it is now let's move ahead so here uh, we have this extended diagram here we will see first is method area that we have in jvm memory then we have heap area then we have stack memory then we have pc registrars and we have native method stack so let's go through it one by one okay so let's see method area first so as we discussed in loading step as well class level information will be stored in method area like class name its parents name method variable info everything right so there is only one method area per jvm and it's a shared resource right let's actually go into the code and check what exactly is happening so if you see here i have a test class and i also have one other class here which is student okay so inside student class we have name roll number and we have getters and setters so these are methods basically and here in the main class i am trying to create object of it right so whenever jvm will load this information it will try to save all these things into a method area right now here i have some code which will display what exactly is saved there so i am not going through this code right now i'll just run it and show you what exactly is the output so if you see here if i run this code then if you see we have a class name saved we have function names four functions and we also have variable names saved at the method area of jvm memory right so this is how it is saved and also uh, now we have ran this code there must be a dot class file which would have created so if i go to jvm uh, so this is a package i created and uh, here if you see this is a class file so if i open this you will see the extension as dot class to that student to the student class and we also have a test class this is how the class file will look and this is what the jvm will pick right now let's go back so let's see heap area next so information about all the objects that we are going to create in java will be stored here so we only have one heap per jvm and it's also a shared resource so in java code we have lot of objects right so it's basically a object oriented language so all the objects information will be stored at the heap area so you might have noticed that okay if you are using intellij or eclipse you go ahead and allocate some memory to heap if you have very less in memory your compilation may fail with memory error then what we do we go ahead and increase the heap memory of jvm and then everything will be all right now next is stack area right have you heard of stack overflow error it comes if this particular memory is exhausted right there are multiple threads in java program right for each thread there is one stack created okay and what we store at that stack we store each method call okay each cell of this stack is called as activation record or stack frame okay so let's say you are calling method a and internally you are calling another method b then a and b will be stored at the stack right and this stack will be destroyed once your thread is destroyed if the thread is terminated then what is the use of keeping the stack so it will be destroyed at that time and it's not a shared resource each thread will use one stack next one is pc registrars so it will store the address of current execution instruction of threads it will save the information about your each thread execution and each thread will have a separate pc registrar so it's not a shared resource and the last one will be native method stacks so it is used to save the native method information so what are native methods so native methods are basically methods which are actually written in some other language and integrated inside your java code right now we have completed the middle part as well so jvm memory is also completed 
Now we will move to execution engine. Now let's see what it is. Now execution engine is the one which actually executes the byte code. So string of zeros and ones. So this guy will start picking line by line and start executing it. And execution engine is classified into three parts. Interpreter, JIT compiler that is just in time compiler and third one is garbage collector. Okay. So you might have heard these terms. So let's see what actually it is. So interpreter. In execution engine, interpreter is the one which will pick up the byte code one by one, line by line and start executing it. But there is one disadvantage. What will happen if there is a function, let's say, which is called at multiple places, then what this guy interpreter will do? Whenever it will encounter that method, it will try to interpret it again and again. So if you call one method thousand, thousand times, this guy will try interpreting it thousand times. Now to overcome this disadvantage, JIT compiler comes into picture. So JIT compiler is just in time compiler which increases the efficiency of interpreter. How it will do? So it will convert your all byte code into a native code. Whenever interpreter try to interpret the repeated method, it will give the native code to interpreter so that it won't have to reinterpret things. Let's say thousand times we are calling this method then JIT compiler will return same chunk of code thousand times and this is a primary task of JIT compiler and the last one is garbage collector the object is there in your memory and it is not being used then remove it so that is the only task garbage collector will do right and this is a part of execution engine as well and at the end if you see uh, after the execution engine we have native method interface and native method libraries so JNI or Java native interface is just kind of an interface which is used to interact with native method libraries that we have. So native method libraries are libraries which are required by JVM to interpret the code which is written in some other language. So let's say uh, we want to integrate some other languages code into Java, let's say C or C++, then uh, execution engine of JVM will require some libraries. So these libraries are native method libraries. So this marks the end of it. So thank you everyone for watching the video. If you like the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends.